Hello everybody, Bill Harrison here with Harden Power Systems. Wanted to take a few minutes and introduce you to another new device. Um, this is what we call the Nano USB. Um, USB drivers are, are fairly common. There's many different types and sizes and so forth. Um, and we've made uh, a variety of them over the years. Um, typically uh, a USB pigtail on one end um, and then whatever the input source is on the other. So it was, it's nearly always been a cable of some sort or another, or it would be integrated into one of our, uh, our larger devices. Now both those approaches are fairly common. Um, what we've done here is, uh, is somewhat different. Um, it, is, uh, it is impressive probably primarily for its size and also, it's uh, frankly only of interest if you know what these are. The, uh, the Anderson power poles, of course, are very common with, uh, with DC applications, especially when it relates to, uh, to ham radio and uh, our juice boxes uh, always carry at least a couple of Anderson ports. Um, you know, of course, Andersons are just a, they're an awesome way to, uh, to manage and tap into DC power. Um, very clever connectors. We use a lot of them. Um, so what we've done here with the Nano USB is taken the Andersons as the source of power. We've integrated a very powerful 3 amp uh, USB driver and then of course we simply exit with a standard uh, type A USB socket. A um, couple of neat things. The, uh, the housing is 3D printed from high impact ABS and that's of course why you can see uh, this kind of this grain the the layers that uh, that are actually the layers that have been successively printed by the printer as it creates the part one of the things that, that's kind of neat is uh, this would be uh, nearly impossible to injection mold um, and, and I've spent a lot of years designing injection molds and, and uh, I'm qualified to speak to that. It's it would be very very difficult, uh, and you simply wouldn't do it. It wouldn't be worthwhile. You would go ahead and make this a a, a two piece clamshell, and then have some method of of connecting the two halves together. Um, it's kind of neat. With the printer, we're able to make a single piece housing out of uh, a very rugged ABS, and then uh, and then kind of finagle the the driver and the circuitry into that. Um, make our connections and then and then pot the whole assembly. Um, I'm hesitant to call this waterproof. It's not, um, but it's it's essentially a solid mass now. Um, you know, it certainly would be water resistant, um, or at least the electronics themselves are potted inside. Um, uh, but it's extremely simple, uh, very powerful, three amps. Um, one of the neat things too is. Uh, uh, we're using the latest USB identification circuit we can get our hands on. Um, one of the persistent challenges with USB drivers is dealing with manufacturers like uh, like Apple um, and uh, and some uh, Samsung and some others. Apple is the primary uh, offender where uh, they try to kind of box you into having to use the uh, the USB drivers and chargers that they either manufacture or license, um, and uh, so far, uh, when we've got quite a few of these out there now, um, so far we've yet to hear of somebody unable to charge one of the more fussy devices like Apple cell phones or tablets. Um, now it's uh, perhaps obvious to say it, but uh, 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 a natural way to power something like that. This is one of our our bat packs. This is a a new version of the RBC2 bat pack which straps on to a, a common uh, SLA battery. Um, but the, the, the bat pack of course outputs uh, uh, DC voltage, whatever you've got on your uh, whatever you got available through your battery. So obviously you could take the nano USB plugged into one of these ports. don't know if you can quite see that but there's a, a status light that lights up here on the nano to indicate that it's receiving power and it's operating. Um, and then once you've done that, obviously you've got USB power. Um, you could use something like our power puck to uh, to distribute the power to more power points, load up more nanos. Um, 
pretty easy to imagine if you want to be a, a hero in your neighborhood at the next time you guys lose power um, if you had a handful of nanos and a couple of batteries and a, and a power puck to distribute to a bunch of different power points man you could charge a bunch of cell phones at one time um, so in any event uh, something like that we can take this example of a, of a small LED light um, and uh, you know obviously that's that's accepting USB power um, the uh, the nano USB is uh, priced very reasonably uh, we are uh, building and selling uh, a, a lot of them we're pretty happy with uh, with uh, the fact that you guys seem to be happy with it um, and in fact if you stop in at uh, at your local ham radio outlet or gigaparts you might see this sitting on the counter um, we're uh, we're wholesaling this retail rack to uh, to our customers and uh, if you see one there buy one from them don't buy it from us uh, we want to support uh, our customers just like uh, uh, we want to support you as our customers so if you see something like that in a retail setting um, if you don't pick one up at least tell them that uh, hey that's the nano USB that's made by hardened power systems um, it's a pretty neat little device uh, it's deceptively powerful again three amps um, you could easily run a splitter off of this um, but we're uh, we're producing these now they're on the website at portableuniversalpower.com thanks for looking guys see you